love we have for Jesus. What a joyous song about Christmas. Did you know that there was a man who did not see the essence of Christmas? Let's find out. Once upon a time, on a cold Christmas Eve, there was a town with the richest, but grumpiest, and meanest person. Nobody ever stopped him and said, My dear Scrooge, how are you? When will you visit me? It was old Scrooge. He had a friend, a business partner to be more precise. His name was Marley. He died seven years ago, leaving Mr. Scrooge alone. Get out of my way, kids! What even is the point of Christmas? Scrooge entered his home and sat busy in his office. It was cold, nasty weather, and the fog was thick. The city clocks had just rung three, but it was quite dark already. A Merry Christmas, Uncle! Bah! Humbug! Christmas is a humbug? Oh, Uncle, you don't mean that. I am sure you don't, right? I do! Merry Christmas! You are too poor to be merry! And you're too rich not to be! What is Christmas anyways? It's only another day of counting my money and bills. I do not need Christmas and Christmas doesn't need me. Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone then. Besides, why be so happy about it? Has Christmas ever made you money? No! There are a lot of things in this world that are great, but not money making. And Christmas is just one of them. It is a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, the only time in the year when men and women open their closed hearts and think of others. And so, Uncle, that Christmas hasn't made me any money. I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. I say, God bless it. If I hear another word sound from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your position. Uncle, don't be so angry. You should come with us tomorrow for a Christmas party. Don't be so foolish. Oh, Uncle Scrooge, why can not be happy for once? Then join us. Oh, good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to see you so cold-hearted, but I have made the effort because I believe it is worth it and I'll keep my Christmas spirit to the end. So, Merry Christmas, Uncle! Good afternoon! Hmm, Scrooge and Molly, I believe, do I have the pleasure to speak with Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Molly, if you please? No, Mr. Molly died seven years ago, this very night. Oh, I am truly sorry to hear that, Mr. Scrooge. Well, I'm not. He left me with piles of paperwork to do. We came here because we believe that Christmas is a time of giving and who might need this more than the poor and homeless. So, are there no prisons? Oh my, many prisons. Good. But we feel that the poor and homeless should also share in our joy and happiness, and prisons can hardly do that, which is why we are raising some money for them. We came here to ask if you'd like to help. With your amount of wealth, we can sure you could do at least- Listen, I will not help people who can't help themselves. If they're struggling, then they struggle. It is their own fault for being lazy. Well then, if you two will please lead yourself out. Close the door. The gentleman lost hope quickly and left. Who wouldn't? Mr. Scrooge was just too grumpy. The world outside was cold and dark. The sun slept away and the darkness took over. It was so cold, in fact, the people outside started lighting matches to warm themselves. Songs could be heard. Lovely voices full of happiness had flooded the town. I hate Christmas songs! Stop it! What are you laughing at, Bob? Eh, I suppose you'll want all day tomorrow. Yes, but it's Christmas. It only comes once a year. I would love to- Nonsense! I don't want to hear that. I want you to come tomorrow morning earlier, you understand? That certainly saddened the clerk, but that didn't change the fact he could spend the night with his family. He pranced his home happily, Christmas spirit still visible in him. Scrooge ate his sad dinner in his sad tavern. 
read his newspapers as usual, and went back home. He lived in the house Marley used to own. It was old and a bit nasty. But what's more important is the large knocker on the front door. It was nothing special, but when Scrooge looked at it, it was Marley's face. It looked dead, ghostly, and horrible. Scrooge just stared at it in horror, but it quickly changed back into the original knocker. Paranoid, Scrooge walked in his house, hurriedly checking if everything was there, or if there was any sign of an intruder. None. Scrooge sighed with relief. He called and started eating his porridge, his mind still filled with Marley, especially what he witnessed. He looked around his room, looking for anything wrong, and oh, he did! He saw a distance bell that hung on the room, and it started swinging, softly ringing, ringing, ringing. It was barely anything at first, until it rang obnoxiously loud, and so did every bell in the house. Though it may have just been a minute or so, to Mr. Scrooge, it felt like an hour, agonizing. And just as that, he heard one of the doors in the house fly open with a loud bang. Some noise just grew louder and louder, and he could hear it. It was going straight to his door. No, it's a humbug. I won't believe it. What he saw made him quickly change his mind. It made his face turn pale. The ghostly figure of a man slowly moved towards Scrooge, facing him. What? What do you want from me? Much. Who are you? Ask me. Ask me who I was. Who are you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Judging from your face, you don't remember me? No, I don't. Oh, have mercy. Why, oh, why are you haunting me? Worry not, old friend. I just came here to warn you. Warn me? About what? I can tell. I can tell you're growing greedy. Greedy like me back then. Have a look at this chain. I made it from selfishness and anger. Money, money, money. It was all I cared for. Oh, Jacob! Please tell me more! Tell me my future! My bright future! None! You have no future. You will carry my own chain. You won't be any different than me. I'm trapped, Scrooge. No rest, no peace. No one to talk to, no one to share my troubles with. My happiness vanished forever ago. But your wealth, money, economy, business. Business. Charity, mercy, and love should have been my business. Hear me, my time is ticking. I must. You will be haunted by three spirits. No, I cannot. Without them, you won't change. You'll stay the same. You need to listen. The first one will come tomorrow at one o'clock. Be prepared. And with that, the ghost was gone. Scrooge just stared at it, the disappearing ghost in awe. Scrooge closed the window, feeling extremely tired. He thought it was fake, a hoax maybe. He was just hallucinating, but his sleepiness took over, falling into sleep. When Scrooge woke up, it was dark. He tried to focus on one thing from the room when the bells by a nearby church rang. It was 12 o'clock. Scrooge thankful that he still had one hour left and went back to bed thinking and thinking, doubting that what have he seen Marley when Marley has been dead for seven years. Ding dong rang the bell. A quarter past? Half past? One o'clock! Joyful Scrooge appeared as nothing had happened, but he spoke too soon. When the last bell rang, a light flashed in the room. The curtains were drawn as hands and he was faced with a different ghost. It wasn't Marley's ghost, but like a child. The strangest thing about it was that from th the top of its head was a bright clear light which lit it all before it, with some fresh green holly in its hand. Are you the spirit who has come to help me? I am. Who? Oh, what are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Whose past? Your past. Uh, 
Why? Because you must understand your past if you are to change your future. The ghost put out its strong hand as he spoke and took him gentle arm. Rise and walk with me. Scrooge rose. They were walking towards the window. Then he held his dressing gown tightly. I am human! I am in danger of falling! Do not fear and put your hand in mine. As the words were spoken, they went through the wall, and they stood on an open country road with fields on either side. City had disappeared, darkness and fog gone. It was clear, cold wintry day with snow on the ground. Good heaven! I was brought up in this place. I was a boy here. Scrooge suddenly noticed a thousand childhood smells hanging from the air, each one reminding him of all hopes and joys long, long forgotten. They walked along the road until a little market town in the distance. It was a whole town with a church, river, with a bridge. But as they came up to a large brick building that Scrooge remembered as a school. The school is not quite empty. A child forgotten by his parents is still here. Scrooge said he knew it, while a tear fell from his eye. Ghost and Scrooge walked across the hall to a door at the back of the building. They opened the door and the room was long, empty, with small lines of wooden desks and chairs made it emptier. At one of this is a lonely boy who was reading by a small fire and cried to see himself as he used to be. I wish, but it's too late now. Worry not, let's see another Christmas. My time is ticking. And there he saw himself again, but he was much younger. He had a troubled look on his face and what could only look like greed and selfishness had taken over him. He had a young girl beside him, around his age as well. The girl's eyes were watery, tears bulging out of them. You, you once loved me. Now all that love you have for me is gone. Now all you care and love for is money. There is nothing worse in this lonely world than to be poor. There is a world without love. But love does nothing for us. It doesn't put food on the table. You fear the world too much. Which is why, with a full heart, I have to let you go. You have chosen your future and you do not need it with you anymore. May you be happy with the life you have chosen. I'm sorry, Scrooge. I hope you're happy. Scrooge just sat there, even when he wanted to call her, hold her, be with her forever and ever, but he couldn't. It was just memories after all. It's the past. It's something you can't change. No! Please! Take me home! The ghost bird with light disappearing. Scrooge felt exhausted. He went back to his bedroom and fell into a deep sleep. Scrooge woke up in the middle of his sleep. He heard someone calling out to him. He did as he was told. And when he entered the place, it was his own room. A great fire went up the chimney, warming everything before it heaped up on the floor to form kind of throne were turkeys, chicken strings of sausages, plum puddings, and bowls of punch that made the room clouded with a delicious aroma. There sat a giant holding a torch. Ha ha ha! Ebenezer, come in, come in. I am the ghost of the Christmas present. Have a look. Look at me. Come. Touch my coat. Scrooge did as he was told, and poof, all the food, drinks, objects disappeared. The room itself disappeared, and what they stood on the city streets on a Christmas morning. Children were playing, tunes and music could be heard. What a cheerful sight! Soon, they entered a house. It was the house of one of Scrooge's clerk, Bob Cratchit, and he saw such a wonderful sight. A family happily singing and cooking. They weren't just nice. Their house wasn't the best as well. Scrooge could tell they were in poverty. But that didn't stop them from being grateful and pleased. 
that Bob? How could they be so happy? They're poor. Is it wonderful? That's what Doug does to a group of people. Bob Cratchit's family were all there. Miss Cratchit, Master Peter, Miss Belinda, Miss Martha, and Tiny Tim. All of them were joyful, and it looked like the only problem they had was Tiny Tim's crutches. Instead of the normal dinner people usually had, they ate geese and bread. But even so, the look on their faces was pure happiness. They were chatting and embracing each other. They slowly finished their dinner, and the table was clear. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Laughter and chatter could be heard, and the scene just disappeared before Scrooge's eyes. They found themselves in another house, more cheerful people. <laughs> he knew that voice. He knew it very well. It was his nephew. The atmosphere was nice and lively. He said that Christmas was a humbug. He believed it too. How sad, Fred. The girl speaking was Scrooge's niece. She was a pretty young girl. Scrooge just never found the time to meet her. He's a funny old man. But do you think money helps him? No, it's useless to him. I have no patience with him. But I do. I just feel sorry for him. He's the only one who suffers from his greed and selfishness. And you think he cares? All he wants and likes is money. Well, take his Christmas. He doesn't visit anyone else. I believe that because of this, he loses some very nice moments in life. I am also sure that his thoughts could never give him the friendship we all need, either he is in his cold office or in his dark rooms. I would like to give him the same chance every year because I feel sorry for him. He may think Christmas is a humbug, as he says, but I am sure that he can't stop thinking about it, year after year, and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? Here's a glass to his health and happiness away. As raising a glass of warm wine for his uncle. I hope that he may one day find happiness that belongs to us all. To Uncle Scrooge. Well, to Uncle Scrooge. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man wherever he is. Scrooge suddenly had a strange feeling of warmth as he heard these words. Words of hope? Words of love. If only he could thank them for their toast. If only the ghost gave him time. The whole scene disappeared before his eyes. The end was always the same. Happy. The spirits stood by sick beds. They were cheerful by hardworking men. And they were patient. This truly was a world where love could rule. Scrooge thought. And when? Scrooge only seen all of this in one night but seemed like forever. Why your spirit life so short? My life upon this world is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight at midnight. Our time together is coming to an end. The bell rang twelve. Scrooge turned around, looking for the ghost, but he was gone. But then, he remembered his old friend's message. He saw a dark figure slowly walk towards him. Dark frog on the ground. An unpleasant feeling. It wore a dark cloak, hiding its face. Scrooge was too scared to look up. Uh, are you the ghost of the Christmas future? Ghost of the future! I fear you more than any spirit I have seen. But as I know, your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live to be a different man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? They had appeared on a city street, the ghost still not talking. He pointed to two men having a conversation. They were men of business, wealth, important people, Scrooge must say. The conversation ended. Both of them moving along to their own doings. The ghost and Scrooge walked until they reached the house of one of his clerks, Bob Cratchit. 
Instead of happiness and laughter, grief and bitter ha unhappiness took over. Scrooge saw a sight he never thought he would see. It was Bob, crying madly like a child. And there sat his family members, comforting and hugging him. Scrooge understood why. Tiny Tim, he, the usual joy and warmth of the family died. Spirit, why did the child die? The spirit said nothing. The scene in front of them changed. It was a churchyard. The spirit moved towards the gate, slowly pointing at the gravestone. Scrooge's legs began to shake, looking at the stone the spirit was pointing at, and there it was. No! No! Spirit, please, I beg you! There lied a long gravestone with the name Ebenezer Scrooge, R.I.P. No! Spirit! Oh, no, 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 no! Please! Spirit, I'll change. I'm not the man who I used to be. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. The spirits of all three shall live within me. I will not forget the lessons that they teach. Oh, please. Oh, please. Scrooge tried reaching for the spirit's hand, but the spirit easily freed itself. Scrooge watched as the spirit's hood became smaller and smaller until it fell down on a bed. And then he was back in his own room. He was the happiest he has ever been. He was given a second chance, another chance to do his old ways. I am as light as a feather. I am as happy as an angel. And I am as merry as a schoolboy. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. Ha 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 ha. Child, what's today? Eh? Uh, why? It's Christmas Day, sir. It's Christmas Day! I haven't missed it! The spirits have done it all in one night! They can do anything they like! Of course they can! Hello, fine boy! Hello, sir! You know if they still have the prize turkey that was hanging up there? What? The one as big as me? What a nice boy! It's a pleasure to talk to him! Yes, my boy! I believe it's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it! Excuse me? Go and buy it, and tell them to bring it here. Come back with him in less than five minutes, and I'll give you half a crown. The boy was running with a shot. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's. I shall love it as long as I live. It's a wonderful knocker. Here's the turkey. Hello? Merry Christmas! He paid for it all with a smile and patted the boy on the head. Screech left his house and walked down the street dancing merrily. Wherever he went, it looked as if a new world had been born, where people greeted each other, smiled, laughed, and laughed. He went to church. He patted children on the head. He talked to the beggars and the homeless, looked into the kitchens of houses and up at the windows. He never dreamt that any walk could bring him happiness. In the afternoon, he turned his steps towards his nephew's house and suddenly surprised him, his wife, and his friends. Wonderful party, wonderful games, wonderful happiness. Scrooge really enjoyed this, that he wished that Christmas will never end. He went to his office early, of course he did. He needed to catch Bob Cratchit coming late, and he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. It was exactly eighteen and a half minutes late. Hello. What time do you think it is? I'm very sorry, sir. You are? Come here, sir, if you please. Sir, please. Christmas only happens once a year. Sir, it will never happen again. Please. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Going? I'm going? I'm going to raise your salary. Merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas, Bob, my good man, than I have ever given you. I'll raise your salary. I'll try and help your family in any way I can. And we'll discuss your situation this afternoon over a bowl of Christmas soup, Bob. And Scrooge meant it too. He did it all, and a lot more to Tiny Tim who did not die. He became a second father, 
He became a friend to all, and his own heart laughed. May that truly be said of us and all of us, as Saint Tim once said. Merry Christmas to all.